Hi, Teresa. Mike, of the list of things to do, how near the top of the list is uh, cutting back on the explosive plays? Uh, at the top, at the top of the list, that's, uh, you know, certainly something that showed up and, and we have to be better at it. Changes field position, changes momentum, got to make them earn everything. Fixing that communication, what, what are some of the, specific, how do you try to get those cleaned up? Um, you know, we talked about this, you know, before the break and you try to identify is it, you know, is it a communication, is it an alignment, uh, is, it, is it is a bust, you know, a mental error, uh, did they just beat you or, you know, did they scheme you up? So, you know, it's a combination of all those things, missed tackles. Dennis Kelly still look like the guy who played for you a couple of years ago? Yeah, I thought he did a nice job. You know, I got a lot of respect for, for Dennis and, and what, you know, he did here and, um, you know, obviously known him for a while. So, you know, he, he, he went in and, and, you know, looked like he took advantage of his opportunities. How about some of the protection issues that you guys had leading up to the bye? Uh, are there some things that you looked at that you feel you could fix from that perspective? Try to block better. And I think that'd be the first place to start. How do those things from, tie into that? From uh, LaRaven Clark in his time here, have you seen, you know, Got any kind of an eval on him or seen him improve in his in his time? Yeah, I think he's understanding, you know, trying to, what we're trying to do. Um, you know, it's just, it's, you know, guys, they're working hard. You know, those players that we get here midseason, they're working hard. The coaches are meeting with them a lot. Um, you know, but what you find is that you're just limited on what you can do. You know, you're in pads, you know, once a week, you know, if you're lucky. Um, so I know he's working hard. We're evaluating him. We, we are. We're trying to, you know, identify all those players that, that can help us in some capacity, um, you know, get them caught up to speed mentally, but then also, you know, physically and in the execution of what we're doing and terminology and the speed of things and how they happen. Drum game's obviously still a foundation for you, Mike, but it's not as productive as it's been in, in the past. Um, is that something that you you looked at during the bye week? Yeah, and, um, yeah, and I think that there's you know there's a lot of good evidence of of what it, what we want it to be, um, you know, and then obviously some of the you know the non-efficient runs, you know, and hopefully, you know, that we can we can break a few. I think that that's kind of probably been the difference when you look at it overall, you know, statistical average or what it may be, but you know we. We're close, and I'm, I know that you know we're gonna we're gonna hit one of those, and you know hopefully try to you know get some continue to get explosive gains there. Colts ran a lot of no huddle against the Jags. How tough and taxing can that be on a defensive front, and how much does it hinder your substitution patterns? Well, if you're conditioned, it doesn't really affect it a whole lot. You know, you'd like to try to be in condition and understand, you know, what's required of you. Um, the substitution, I think you have to you know be smart. Make sure that you know they're standing over the ball when when they sub, um, whether that's going to second. I mean, there were times they went on the ball after an incomplete pass. So, you know, that's some that's how they wanted to operate that uh, last week. We'll see how they want to operate this week. What do you think of how some of their young receivers are starting to merge, like Alec Pierce, Pittman, and, and those guys? Well, they're big targets. They, um, you know, they're physical. You know, they're physical at the top of their routes and. You know, we'll have to do a good job, you know, defending that. Um, you know, Campbell showed up. You know, certainly the tight ends got great length. So uh, th those are all things. You know, this is a, each week is a different. You know, one week you're you're playing some guys, maybe um, Samuel and, and and McLaurin, and then back. You know, that have a skill set, and then in, on to the next week where you have to get ready for, you know, different you know, different players with different skill sets. As you prepare for this team, how do you weigh? what they've done for a couple of years versus last week when they do a heavy pivot into the passing game. How do you, how do you weigh your preparation on what you're going to see? Well, I think we have to be prepared, um, you know, for things that they've done against us in the past, things that they've tried to, you know, modify and, and change and, and, and figure out ways to, for them to move the ball, which is what they did last week. So, you know, a lot of the preparation is going to be on, you know, some of the things that they've done well recently and the things that they did well against us that we'll probably see again unless we correct it. Red zone is typically regarded as <clears throat> the more difficult place to work. Getting there generally viewed as easier. You guys have kind of to flip 
flip that? How, how do you get there more? more often? Yeah, get there more often and, and try to continue to score touchdowns. I think that that's just, you know, getting into drives. We, we've got to, you know, when we're able to get into drives and, and again, complement the plays that we're running, uh, we usually more times than not go down and, and make those scoring drives. I mean, just too many three and outs. And, uh, you know, again, we've talked about this. You're going to have to have some, some X plays. You're going to have to have some third down conversions. And you're going to have to avoid the critical mistakes and the critical penalties. That's how you, that's how you move the ball into the red zone. How much of it is first down for you in the second half in, in keeping those drives going? Has that been down that's really been setting you back? Uh, you know, I mean, I think that's part of it, you know, just trying to keep, you know, stay out of third and long and and make sure that we're efficient and, and that the plays that we're, we're, we're calling, um, you know, are complementing the stuff that we're doing earlier. It's just, to me, it's really just about making sure that we're, we're all on the same page offensively, that the call's getting in there, um, you know, and being able to adjust to, to some of the things that, that may happen in the second half and, and being ready for them. Stonehouse, what did you see in him that allowed you to be comfortable replacing a, a pretty accomplished punter here? And then also, uh, how, how, how do you think that's played out so far this season? Uh, well, I'll answer for, you know, I thought it's played out really well. Um, I don't think that, that Stoney had his best game, um, you know, against, against Washington. I, I think we can punt better, you know, the last time out. Uh, he knows that. Um, but I would say up until then, I think he's been able to flip the field and, you know, we figured out how to cover them. We got a pretty good net net average. Um, but I, I think like with any other player in position, you you try to focus on how, how they've improved, you know, basically what their potential looks like, how much of that have they have they reached? Are they continuing to improve um, for a punter, you know, ball placement, hang time, uh, operation? You know, those were things that I think we uh, evaluated and he continued to get better. I don't think that the, the competition was too much for him, and uh, that's how we came to that decision. Snap had a good kick, record with the uh, come up. Is, is snap to kick a good number for you with him? Um, as far as I get off time? No. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's, I don't think that's been an issue. I mean, I think that sometimes it's, you know, maybe the steps, um, you know, I think that there was one or two where, you know, we probably walked off, you know, close to the wing and I think the wing could have been you know the wing could have been better but um, you know I don't think that that's been an, an, an overall issue uh, with the long rest uh, since you've been here what do you credit any any things in particular that you feel like you guys have done well whether it's preparation or, or extra rest or anything like that that's contributed to that I mean I think the extra rest certainly helps I don't think it ever hurts uh, but it comes down to execution it comes down to you know, the, the game on Sunday, you know, if Monday was any indication, I thought we practiced with good speed and looked like that we were, you know, rested. I'm hopeful that uh, it'll look the same today. How's the mind feeling? Is it, and does he start back on the concussion? No, no, he's he's passed through the, the protocol, um, uh, so he should be, you know, good to go. With Nick Danico Archer, excuse me, is there anything that you've learned different about him just – since he's come here and, and, and been here for this year and a half? Well, I mean, obviously, it's, I didn't really know much of him before he got here. I knew, you know, kind of who he was as a player and, you know, coached against him. Um, you know, so there's things that when you spend a lot of time with people every day that, you know, you, you get to learn about them, their personalities. And, you know, I think that that's what makes a team great. That's what makes, you know, trying to bring a team together, you know, especially – um, guys that haven't been here or guys that just showed up this week, whether that be, you know, Josh or, or Parker or, or Kyron Brown. You know, I mean, those guys were trying to get, you know, acclimated to how we do things. So that versatility he has to play like from three tech mm -hmm. all the way to wide nine, is that something that you had already known about him? Or, or yeah, those that... are all things. You know, I mean, he was an outside edge player, you know, coming out and then kind of continued to, you know, add some different things to his game, and he's got good size. He's very instinctive, and um, you know, plays well whether where he's inside or outside. I think he's got a good skill set for either. How much is what he and Jeff have been able to do mostly inside, kind of giving the substitute outside guys some 
leeway, maybe? Well, I mean, those guys have to impact the game, help help us. You know, we, we, we're going to need, you know, those guys to help us impact the the quarterback. And, you know, certainly whether that's uh, running when they run it or, or throw it, but you got to affect the quarterback, and those guys have helped us do that. What does it sound like Ola and Bainey out on special teams, especially the impact he's had, and, you know, who needs to step up and, and you know, do that job? Uh, Kayla Lowell has been out in the last three games, so we've had guys step up. And, uh, you know, Raider had three tackles last week. He's a tight end with the last time that we played. Um, looking for good things from Monty Rice as he gets his, you know, back in there. And you know, so this wasn't something that was just, you know, happened this week. We've seen Dylan Cole make a couple of flash plays. We've seen Dylan Cole make a couple of flash plays at – Various times, how's he done down in and down out uh, filling in for Zach? Well, I think that there was, you know, some 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 good plays, some things that we got to correct. But um, you know, there, there, I think he's improved. You know, I think he's improved and continued to, you know, to be a core special teams player for us as well. Is that kind of a? Uh, uh, is that kind of maybe the the model of how guys who come in here maybe? as a practice squad player, then they get on the roster and they're on special teams and then they get their opportunities. that kind of the model of how, how you move up the ranks? Well, you move up the ranks by taking advantage of your opportunities, you know, practicing well, um, knowing what to do when, when you get in there and, and build, you know, earning confidence from your teammates and your coaches and, you know, ultimately performing on the field. Had you been more optimistic about Ola's capacity to return or did you just not need the roster spot? Until he just... You know, it was that's a roster move that we decided to make. You know, and there's a you know, you can only have 53. You can't have more than that. You know, whether guys are going to come back at a certain amount of time, we'll identify that and you know see where we can use the rules. If if guys are healthy after four weeks that are on IR, then they'll start to practice. One of the problems Pierce creates is, is he seems to be a guy who high points the ball. Really I'm well. sorry, who Pierce? The, the rookie yeah. Receiver well, guy. he's fast. Yeah. You know, he's fast and he's big and he's got good play strength. So. Um, you know, I think the more that he plays, it certainly looks like he's gotten better and he's been able to create some penalties down the field and also, you know, make some plays down the field. So, so who are you repping there, Ryan? I got Blue here today. I'm not sure what shelter he's located at, but he's here in Nashville. Uh, it's adoption weekend here, so any shelters across uh, the Nashville metro area, Mars Pet Care is going to be covering the cost of all the adoptions. So if you're in the market for a new pet and um, – and uh, wants to add something to your family, then just go buy in a, a shelter, and, and Mars will take care of it for you. Ryan, you've, uh, this Sunday will mark your 49th straight regular season start, which would put you one ahead of Steve McNair as the most consecutive starts by a quarterback in the Titans era of the franchise. Does that hold any significance to you? Uh, not something I think about. Uh, I mean, I want to be out there with my guys and, and compete and, and, um, and be reliable. So. Uh, something I pride myself on is, is being able to show up week in and week out, um, but not something I, on the daily basis that I that I put significance in in that number. Ryan, what are some of the challenges or advantages of playing a team in such a quick turnaround? Yeah, we know each other well, right? I mean, we play each other twice a year, and then obviously twice in three weeks. So, um, you know, neither team is going to change a whole lot. Well, obviously, both sides will have their wrinkles and their adjustments that we make from the first game, but. Um, you know, we know their players, they know our players, and it's going to come down to who can go out and execute and play the more physical game. Back to, back to the staying healthy thing. Do, do you consider that somewhat of a skill? Is it a quarterback skill in the league to, to stay healthy? I don't know. There's, there's, I guess, a little bit of technique into it, right? Just knowing when to take care of yourself, knowing how to, uh, you know, pick your feet up in the pocket and, and try to avoid big hits. But there's also a bit of luck, you know what I mean? Uh, some things you just can't avoid. So um, it's a little bit of both, I think. Good coming off buys and, and long rests and things like that. What do you, th what do you think contributes to that? Is it, is it the extra rest? Is it the extra prep or, or you know self scouting? What are, what are some of the primary factors that you guys have such a good record you know, coming up? Yeah, I would hope all those things go into it. You know, the, the rest, the extra, the extra um, preparation. Um, it's coming coming back rejuvenated a little bit. Um, our guys have have done a good job so far this week of of coming back ready to go. Had a great practice on Monday, good energy. Guys are flying around offense and defense, and we got a, a lot out of that practice. So look forward to uh, continuing that the rest of this week. How do you think does, does everybody do that? I, I like your guys' record is particularly good. I wonder if there's anything that, that stands out particularly. You think that, that you <laughs> I don't, know. or just I don't know. You know, I want to go out and win each and every week, and 
and do everything I can to do it. So, yeah, I, hopefully, uh, you know, you're a little bit healthier coming off a of bye, but I think that's that's probably most teams coming off a of bye. How do you think Akampo is coming along just as far as being able to assume a, a larger role with, within the offense? He's done a good job so far. Obviously, made some plays for us the last time we played these guys, um, and his uh, – his talent is, is showing. So um, there's going to be some situations where hopefully we can get him the ball. Um, but I think that, that role will, will slowly continue to develop as the year goes on. Day to day, are there things that you could pick up on that make you feel like, yeah, you know, he's starting to understand this thing? I think just if you look, take a step back and look at like where he started at and, and where he's at now, you know, you see the growth of, of when he came in and um, you know, flash for us a little bit in the spring and just has been steady for us, you know, throughout training camp up until this point. You know, he's taking advantage of his opportunities, which I think is huge. You know, we preach that all the time in this building. And um, when he's had opportunities on Sundays, he's made them. So uh, that's what you'd love to see from a guy. We've talked a lot and asked you a lot about X plays in the passing game. The run game production is, is also down a little bit. You think you guys are building towards maybe the home run plays that, that get the run game going in that direction? Yeah, with Derek and, and our, our run game, you never know which one's going to hit, right? I mean, there's certain plays you like throughout the week, um, but you never know which one's going to be going to be the home run. And uh, a lot of times it comes down to one block on the backside, just freeing, freeing Derek up, letting him get through that second level clean. And, and then obviously we've seen what he can do from there. So we just have to stick with it. You know, I, I believe and, and we know that uh, those big plays will come. We just have to stay true to our process, execute the blocking schemes up front, and, and give Derek some space. There's a lot of football left, but obviously a big game against uh, a team that is playing well right now. You know, one, three of the last four, they've come back in each of their the last four games. So we have a ton of respect for this team, this organization, and, and know we're going to have to go out and play well. So uh, to get them at home in, in October for our second time, playing them in the last three weeks, uh, we're excited for this game. What's your quarterback's role, I guess, in inspiring teammates, lighting a fire under him? Under him and is there a line that maybe you don't cross as a, as a quarterback? I mean, probably taking shots at their family. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm not sure what line you're, you're talking about there. But uh, yeah, you definitely want to uh, try to inspire guys. I mean, it happens on a daily basis, whether it's in a walkthrough or you know, out of practice, pre-practice. You know, if you feel the energy down a little bit, could happen on, on game day on the sideline. You, know, you feel that energy down a little bit. You're trying to um, you know, speak life into the guys and, and get them going a little bit. Are you scoring is down, not only for you guys this year, but for the entire league, it looks like scoring is down. Any any theories uh, in, in particular as to, as to what? I mean, it's not like a number of years. I have no idea. You guys probably have a better idea about than me. Um, no, I'm just trying to go out and do the best job I can. I have no idea on the uh, the league-wide stuff. You guys stood pat at wide receiver here during the break. And what people were wondering. And you Obviously, there's, there's confidence not just in the group, but in the guys that are that are coming back. Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, that's what, that's what we did. So, I mean, we have confidence in that room and the guys that have, have made plays for us. Um, and we're going to continue to lean on them as we move forward. What's the chess match like when you play teams so close together? You, you, they kind of know what you're going to do. You're going to change some things up. They're going to change some things up. And what, what's it like when you play close proximity? Yeah, these are, these are always like tough battles, right? Division games, especially when you're kind of back to back like this. Um, like I said, they know you, you know them. It comes down to who can go, go out, play the more physical game, execute better. Um, I mean, we, we play similar kind of kind of ball. So um, at the end of the day, it comes down to going out, executing at a, at a higher level than they do, and making more plays. Do you find that the prep work when you're playing a team so close together in that span is easier or maybe even more challenging from your perspective? Um, it's just different. It's just different just because um, – you know, there's not a whole lot of tape in between, you know, the two games. So uh, there's, there's not as much to study uh, tape-wise, but, you know, you're making a lot more adjustments um, internally. So uh, just balancing those things out, making sure we're on top of all the details heading into the game. When you go back to camp, there was so much work. You and, and, and Hooper getting that chemistry, developing that, but the production hasn't exactly matched it. Well, why do you think that is? I don't know. I just, for whatever reason, it hasn't... Uh, Hasn't turned out that way so far. Uh, doesn't doesn't think it's not doesn't mean it's not going to get going. I have a lot of faith in him, and obviously you mentioned the we have a a, a good connection and have put a lot of work into that connection. So 
Um, I'm just waiting for that, that ball to start rolling in that direction, and then I believe it's going to take off from there. How much of a factor, an X factor, can Dontrell Hilliard be? We've seen him make plays with the ball in his hands, get a lot of yards after the catch on those little flare passes and screens. Yeah, he's a talented guy, obviously. He's made big plays for us going back to last year, then this year um, in every game he's been in. So, um, you know, definitely brings a little something different to the table than, than Derek does. Um, and uh, he's great with the ball in his hands. So I want to get it to him as best way we can. Did you play a game with Delaney uh, when, when he was here? Or was he already out that season? I think I played about half a game uh, with Delaney. Um, so yeah, I was on the team with him, but didn't spend a whole lot of time actually on the field uh, with him. He was a little bit banged up uh, when I took over and, and didn't make it too much longer after I, uh, I took over. Did you get to know him any? I don't know if you saw where he retired yesterday. Did you get to know him any? Did you spend any time with him? You know, during the course of his time in the league, and what you think about him as a player? Yeah, from afar, it was a guy I always respected. You know, from his time in, in San Francisco, um, you know, a guy that, that you always loved to watch. Just had had great energy, made big plays, uh, playing that kind of hybrid role for them, and then came here and started playing a little bit more traditional tight end role. And obviously had a had a heck of a career here, made a bunch of big plays, and then you know being on the team with him as he was coming off an injury, um, you still saw. The talent level he had, you know, the energy he had, such a great energy, such a good guy to be around, um, and still made plays for us that year early in the year. So, um, definitely a guy that I respected a lot from afar, and then only grew in that respect once I got on the same team with him. When you look at your second halves this year, and, and, and you talk about consistency on those drives, how much of the issue has been first down and kind of falling behind the sticks? Yeah, I mean, you don't want to be behind the sticks. That's the worst place to uh, to be. You know, I think. Anytime you find yourself in a bunch of third and longs, it's going to be uh, you know tough sledding. Just percentage-wise, uh, you're not going to be in a, in a favorable position there. So I want to be efficient on first and second down and keep it into third and manageable. Do you view that, that that's been a problem or in those second halves in particular? Yeah, we've had a lot of long yard situations. And uh, so definitely want to you know get those drives, get those possessions started with efficiency.